Om buat Tina. Kabar ya sekunyi ini. Mumbai Potse, 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 Potse. Ini kepuasan. Santai. Yes, umekula missing in action. Kutasema hivyo kwa kingereza. So, umepote ya sana. Habari ya siku nyingi? Misuri sana. Lakini sija kuwa wakati nyingi. Chuo kinaendelea aji. Sawa. How is the university? Uh, it's sour, so it's not perfect, but it's okay. <laughs> hey, Mambo, Jeff. Mambo. Mambo, Moya. Ah, Nikom Zima, who named the idea? Nikom Zima. Okay, okay, Karibu, Karibu, yes. So, Sidu and Gina are coapi. Ba, ni sisi wawili kwa sasa so tutaanza sisi wawili so leo sina maneno mengi tuseme ni kuna maneno mengi kama kawaida lakini wengine tutaendelea tuna darasa tukiwasubiria waje so kama ilivyo desturi naona tena unaniangalia vibaya naongea Kiswahili kingi yes i see you are looking at me and you are like what good only swahili yes okay so for now, so I think this one. It's a nona, nona screen angle, Sibio. You can see my screen, right? Do you? No, you wanna. Okay, excellent. So, okay. Okay, okay. So, yeah. So, we are Mimi Ru, Arafu. Kama I give you the story to Tajita Morisha, we will introduce ourselves first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nini. Najua tina tina najua najua so yes but najua but uh, tina mwenye hajafanya mazoezi ya Kiswahili kwa muda so she has not been practicing Kiswahili she may have forgotten even the basic routine and stuff tina naam jitambulisha tafadhali tina langu ni tina Naishi mm -hmm. Ujarmani. Mm -hmm. uh, Nina Miaka. Oh, how old I am? Uh, Ishirini na Mbili. Mimi ni Manafunzi. Wachuo Kiku. Um, mm -hmm. Ya nafanya kazi ya uh, mwalimu. Um, mm -hmm. The hobbies I'm going to be a kusikiliza mziki na kuimba. Hey, safi kabisa. So, Jed, uneza jitambulisha pia. Okay. Jena langu ni Jed. Mm-hmm. E, natoka swatini mm -hmm. uh, leo hakuna watu wana wengi <laughs> so <laughs> natoka swatini <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, mimi ni mchungaji ye ni mustafu uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Eh, obizangu ni ku anduka kitabu na ku na kusoma uh, cheza mpira wa meza kupika meeting basi kabisa Adafu, mimi mwenyewe mnanjua so you know me na jina langu ni Amuel na ishi Mombasa mimi pia ni mwanafunzi kama tina kwenye chuo cha kiufundi 
ya Mombasa, <laughs> Technical University of Mombasa. Pia nafanya kazi ya utafiti kwenye Useme kwenye kwenye tunaisema vipi? Angalia nikisahau. So kwenye contract um, so nafanya kazi ya utafiti kwenye kampuni fulani alafu kwa kawaida hobbies yangu kusikiliza muziki kwa wingi kukimbia kuogelea na mimi make yes so hiyo ni kama introduction yangu so nitaenda moja kwa moja hadi kwa darasa la leo so i'll go one by one until to the today's class mm -hmm. So sijui pam 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 tena Tina? Okay. Uh did you do you know what we are looking at? Are you in a, uh, are you familiar with whatever we are looking at? Um the now classes and prefixes? I think mm. I know them, but I'm eating in the moment. They are like uh, infinixes, so you can see them here. So like when you say me, you, him, uh, us, you, them, it's them, you know, like those kind of uh, infinixes. They are in between the sentences. So we have been looking at them for the last two weeks, so story by story. So today we are looking at the small pakumu infinixes. But um, yeah, so these are like some of them that we looked uh, in the previous week, so. Uh, are you able to like um are you familiar like for example with this one uh, can you understand what it means uh i don't know the word letter but i know that it's like i in the moment and you in plural but letter i don't know letter is this one come on uh, ring. Right so uh. i bring you Mm. Yes. So yeah, it basically you are saying like I'm bringing, I'm Ninam data. It like the M. It means like um in the infinitives the M means like uh them oh, like yeah. he, she. Yes, he or she. So it means like you are bringing a uh, or it. Yes. So it's like somebody if like uh, somebody call you and they are like um you know um. I need a Swahili teacher. Then you're like, oh, just wait a moment. I'm bringing the teacher, you know? Then mm -hmm. now you bring me, like, uh, how you answer them, you can tell them in Swahili, Ninamreta Mwarimua Swahili. So, which means I'm bringing the Swahili teacher or I'm bringing him, you know, like this, Ninamreta Mwarimua Swahili. So, which means I'm bringing, like, somebody, you know, like in that person, Ninamreta. Yes. Okay. And Nina Waletas then Urura. the plural you or they? Yes, and uh, if I was to change this one, so for example, I can change it, uh, let's say to you, like I, what if I say I want to bring you? So how can I say that? Nina Waleta. No. You can see this one here, down here. So I'll say Nina Kureta. So which means I'm bringing you. Oh. Yes, Nina Kureta. So, but uh, the plural for uh, this one also will be the one. Or Nina Kureta. Yes. So it will be the one. Nina Kureta. this talk. But uh, yeah, yeah. But for uh, you, singular, it means that. Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah. Kureta, you, like second person, first person to second person, Nina Kureta. So I'm bringing you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm familiar with it, but it's still like I need the table next to me. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyways, uh, the table is here. So, we have been looking at them slowly by slowly, but uh, so they are somewhere there, so in between there. So sometimes they may be confusing, but uh, yeah. So we already looked at almost all classes. Now we are down here. Okay. So we are down here because we look, 
uh, the classification of nouns and how they are here. And now, because we know the prefixes, most of the they are almost the same prefixes except like almost all the like except for the first person they change a little bit, but uh, like the need to and wa for that person and they yeah, so they are almost the same. But the second person it becomes a who in the infinite, but in the prefix it becomes a mm. But when you go to the infinite, um. Uh, that person it becomes some um, mm, most of the time because it's in the middle. Then uh, instead of being like mean, um, so anyways, so yeah, they were so they they just change except uh, yeah. So for the first person they may change, but the rest of the the mikras, the jima, the kivi, the n, the ukras, they remain the same. And the paku mu, so they also remain the same. Most likely, yeah, they remain the same. But uh, for the first part, like um, the first class, the mu class, the infinixes change a little bit compared to the prefixes, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So we, yeah, so we already looked at this one, so can see anything that is in bed. So this is like for the people. So like saying different ways. So for example, when I say this one, so this one is very common, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you find that we have Nina Kupenda, which means I love you. So we have the you there. Then when you say Nina, Nina Mpenda means he or she, you have you know, you have a uh, or him. Then also, Nina G means I mean some acting myself. Yeah. So then, Unani Penda. This is a different uh, way, like um, reflecting a different person, like um, saying you love me or this Unani Penda. Then also we have Nani Penda, which means like you, like uh, Nani Penda. Yes, Nani Penda is plural for you, so which means you love me. Then Anani Penda means he or she loves me. Then Anatu Penda means that uh, they love us. So, yeah, so something like that. Uh, I'm well. <coughs> yes. Uh, Nani Penda means like now that's there's a key. It's, mm -hmm. a, it, it's an object. It's not a person. Yes, I, yes. Uh, that's why you meet it. Yes, this one is a key. Okay. Yes. That's, yes. That's yes. The key yes. Because, yes. That that's why I, I I am just looking at the Mua class before I go to the key. So I want just to show a little bit like oh. this. And I uh, am, yeah. so that's why you see I omitted like uh, Nina Kireta because it's like in the Kivi class, like where we have the knife, Kitty, Kisu, yeah, so those things. So when so, you say, yes, I'm bringing the knife or the spoon or like the Kitty, I'll say Nina Kireta, I am bringing, you know, mm -hmm. yes, like for example, say, can you give me a chair? Then I'll tell you, Nina Kireta, it means I'm bringing it. Yes, Nina Vireta means I'm bringing them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But of course, this one can change. Like the prefixes, uh, do we change? So what, what if, for example, you say I say you are bringing the chair. So it will be una kireta, you know? Una kireta, meaning you are bringing. If it's um, the, that person, it means anahireta, which means he or she is bringing the chair. So it changes also, yeah. Indeed. Um, more, yeah? Nina? Uh, Nina Swali. Uh, when I want to say, like, walking through the nature, I like it. How do I say I like it in this case? Pardon? Uh, like the Nina Miti, Nina Penda. Ah, this one here. So if, 
So if you like uh, the tree and you are referring specifically to the tree, you can say like the tree itself, you can say if it's one, you can say ni, na, u, penda. So like, because it's in the class you, so now we have the you here, it represents something that is in me, me. Yes, so you find out, you can say, no, let me just put everything in the graph so that But now there's a, a collective word now for the for nature, like a person, she's uh, walking. So you, yeah. Yeah. Like an action, when I want yeah. to say I like an, doing yeah. something. Like nature. Like nature? So nature, nature is a, um, let's say you say mazingira. So, so mazingira, okay, mazingira. So mazingira means like, um, we have, if it's one, so let me just put this one. So if it's one, it's zingira. So zingira, so if it's one, but because we are talking about the nature and it's many, it's mazingira. So mazingira automatically goes to the class jima, okay? So automatically goes to the class jima, okay? So to Papa Moya, you are you, you are together with me in the analogy. So it goes to the class jima. So which means if you are referring to the class jima, so you see here we are there, we are. So now you want to say that I like the mazingira, so you can say ni na ya, okay? Ni na ya. Penda, okay, Ninaya Penda. So Ninaya Penda, Mazingira. So like means meaning like you know you like the nature itself. So now we have the ya here representing kara. Yes, the Mazingira, the nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wrote yeah. my my yeah. um fano in the chat. Yes. So you, sometimes you. you just so which category sometimes the word is so it cannot be in the mummy like um always so walking in the nature so i write it so uh-huh nina so if you want to say like i like walking in the nature of course it won't refer to the mazingira now so you, you can sum up uh now you can just change probably Okay, so you can change like uh, this uh, statement to like uh, Nina. So it becomes very simple. Nina Pena, Ku, Tembea. So Ku Tembea, Kwenye. You know Kwenye? Mm -hmm. uh, so Mazingida. So which means I like walking in the nature. So yeah, so it, uh, it's, um, yeah, I like. Uh, walking in the nature Tula. yes so yeah that like is so i like working in the nature but if you like the nature itself like uh, being the main subject so you say in a panda mazingira now then we have this representative but if you say i like working in the nature we just get uh you know the primary uh verb and the you know like uh, the dependent verb, kutembea, and uh, then you get the mazingira, which is the, yes, so, and you just make a simple sentence. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. If you mazingira and a city. Pardon? Mazingira, uh, that environment and nature are the same. Yes. So, Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I also found Tabia for nature from the Arabic. I also found a Tabia for nature in the internet. Tabia, it's in the chat. Yes, but Tabia, it's a mannerism in terms of uh, somebody's nature, like when you're talking about somebody's character, you know, what they do. Ah. You know, okay. so like, um, yes, what people do, the nature of somebody, like if you're talking about an animal or a person specifically in this context, because if I say, unatabia baya, like, um, like this, I say, unatabia baya, means like you have a very bad habit, you know, bad habit mm -hmm. in terms of 
Uh, yes, yes, like a uh, very bad habit. Let me see if I'm able to write. So I can say, una, okay, una, sabia, mbaya, okay? Okay, mbaya. So which means now, I, it means like you have very bad manners anyways. It means like you have, like you have bad manners slash a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, yes. Like bad habits or manners. So when I say like, um, for example, if somebody asks me, why is the cat sleeping? I can say, so in like a uh, so I can say, Kyo ni tabia yake. So in this context, it means that is it's nature. It's yes, it's nature. You know, you need to be a yake. So that is um it's nature, you know, like uh, it's nature, you know. Why is the cat sleeping? Yes, so that is. Uh, that is that that is its nature or is actually maybe let's say it's a female cat anyway or a male cat so it's nature that is its nature you know yes so you need to be a yake so yeah in terms of uh, you know something that uh, they do but it's not like uh, when you're talking about environment so you cannot say to be a different context. The words may look the same, but yeah. you know, even in German or English, we have words which you are told like um, they are synonyms. Like for example, the word finish and uh, complete, but you can use them together. Like for example, when I tell you you are completely finished, my friend, trust me, it carries the evidence of those two words. But you can say, I'm finished with my assignment. I've completed my assignment. But if somebody tells you are completely finished, <laughs> you start crying. <laughs> but the dictionary tells you that two words. Yes, but the dictionary tells you the two words are the same. <laughs> yeah. And I also thought because in Arabic, Tabia is like an, the nature, like environment. So I thought it's in Swahili the same. Yeah, it's a, it's a borrowed word from Arabic. I don't deny that. But sometimes you find um, like the way the words are used when they are borrowed from different uh, like um, different languages, the way the morphology of the word changes, it's uh, it changes to different uh, description of different things because you find somebody is trying to describe a phenomenon in one language, but they don't have a word to describe it. So they use the language, the other word from the language. And uh, you find with time, the morphology of the word just changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, like uh, the original meaning in the other language. So yeah, it happens. Even some words like, um, for example, like, um, like uh, there's this word. Oh my God. Let me see the okay. okay. So like uh this one. How would you use this word? I use it all the time. This is a French word, but it's English word. It's a meeting, like a date, what I say. Yeah. Yeah, but where exactly did the word come from? Did do do you think where like um it's like um it's a French word, but it came, it came from the military, okay? So mm -hmm. when somebody tells you rendezvous, you know, rendezvous means like, let's rendezvous somewhere, let's meet at a, a place, but it means like, uh, you know, in terms of military, you know, military okay. way. But in English, when I tell you like, um, let's rendezvous, it means a normal meeting, you know, like this. But this is like more of a military what but you find in english the way we use it eh. anyway yeah <laughs> so in next to my university we have like a place called rendezvous <laughs> yes <laughs> and, like to meet there so somebody asks you where are you then they are like i'm at rendezvous so rendezvous we have a very big transformer so where students like and a small restaurant where like uh, we have you know they have barbecue and all sorts of things so 
all the students there, you ask somebody, where are you? Are you in the university? They are like, no, not exactly. I'm at Landes. Actually, they say, I'm in Dendes. Dendes, like in Swahili. Nico Dendes. So, yes. <laughs> yes. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyways. So you find like uh, the morphology of the words just changes uh, with how it's used from the original meaning. It may change so like a uh, side tree. But if you take the analogy of how it is describing things, you come to like, um, you know, get the meaning even from the original meaning, but you are like, huh, okay, interesting usage, but it describes at the end of the day, whatever you need to get to describe. To call some up. Yes, okay, wow, okay, so. Here to na Kibi, so yes, so that was Kibi, okay. Then Jima, did we look at Jima? So Jima, 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 Jima. So Manana Jima. So what if? Uh, So what if you want to talk about something like, for example, I want to talk about Jicho. You know what is a Jicho, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and I want to say, I add my, you know, Jicho. So how would I say that? Um, what's hurt? Uh, at it's like, um, you can say umia, umia, umia. Umia means like uh, inja, inja, jari. So inja, inja. Yes, inja or you know hat something here. Yeah. Umia. Although it, uh, yes, although it will change a little bit. Yes. Yes, ni, ni. Okay, like two double S, Nidiri Umiza. So Nidiri Umiza. Umiza, okay, Nidiri Umiza. So we have the first, this one for like the tense, and we have the second one, which shows this marker. So for the, yeah, Jicho. So Nidiri Umiza. So even if I change this one, I can say Nime Umiza. So yeah, so Tukosa Wapo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. Yes, so Miriumiza Jicho. So which means like I add uh I add my eye. So mm -hmm. okay. So. Yes, so so I think these are like uh, some of the things that uh, you check out so in the previous sessions because we talked with them um, so talking about them, so we have different. I got this one here. No, not that one. Let go very far. Yes. Okay. So we have uh, the group um, easy. So easy. We have. Easy, 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 easy. So you're let's write, uh, You're writing yes. this word. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Okay. So we have, uh, <laughs> we have uh, easy here. So we have um, like the Mesa. So Mesa can be Mesa. Mesa can mean a table, but Mesa can be in two categories, right? So Mesa can be in the Jima, but also it can be in easy. So in this instance, I used it in easy. So we said Ameinunua, Mesa, so which means he or she bought the table. Then Amezinunua, which mean, meaning he or she bought them, you know, many tables, you know. Mm -hmm. So what does it so, okay. then also pardon? Uh 
does the non class of Mesa differ from the context, or is it just like I want it to be in this non class? So, uh, yeah, it is um, like, uh, of course, like uh, the reason why we use like, um, like uh, the object in Phoenix is so it's because, like, for example, when we go to the, like uh, a story, you know, like um, instead of being repetitive, you know, like uh, saying, referring to, even in English, referring, like, for example, I'm talking about Tina, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I'll say, like, for example, I'm told, you know, you come and visit me and we go to a meeting, I was introduced and I'll be like, this is my friend Tina, she is from Germany, she is a very brilliant person. You see, like, I already switched from using, like, uh, you know, Tina again. All right. So instead of saying Tina goes to this and this and this and this and this and this, she does this and she brought this because of, you know, instead of yeah. like uh, still using Tina, 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 I go to uh, pronouns and I go to, you know, it or them or they or, you know, describing different things that you did, you know, like when I said yeah. that um, she, uh, like I said, she brought, uh, you know, some nini, nini, nini. Then now in the second sentence, I'll be like, she brought them so that you can be and explain instead of saying now the thing. So you find that there are the infinixes and um, the prefixes, they are just used to like, uh, you know, to, you know, like um, remove that repetition in the language, in the Swahili. But, uh, I'm just, not that you need to know them very well, but um, they, I always like, uh, say, <laughs> I always say that. <laughs> you are well, you're welcome to come and eat. <laughs> yes, Nirona Nacheka Kwasabu Nasemu Nachoma Karanga. Anyway, uh huh. So, yes, so, but you find that uh, when you get to know them, you find that as much as you are reading the like different sentences and different stories, you are able to get like um, the context of stuff. So like, for example, once I'm done with um, the this part, so I wanted to look a little bit about the pa kumu a little bit first. So although the pa is like the most common, so like that. So once we look at it, so there's a story that I sent in the, like a couple of um, days ago. And I just wanted us to look at that story, you know, about the elephant, the, the panya, and you see how the story, you know, changes and how it's using the infinixes, and the, you know, the prefixes and that, yeah? you get to just see them. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Cindy mm Apple. -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but this is a, a big lesson by itself. I've been doing it for the last uh four weeks. So we already looked at classification of nouns. So once you get to know like the classification of nouns, this ones they start uh, making sense. So because like, for example, we have Barafu, we have Tahawa. So like, for example, you see, we say this one, we are making a job. We say like, uh, what if we want to consider Barafu as a person? So, so we say if Barafu was a person, we can say Ameyuka. You know, the year is like when we are referring to a person, but because Barafu is not a person or a living being, we say Nina uh, Yeyusha. So Barafu Ime, Ime Yeyuka. Yes. So Nina Yeyusha means I'm melting the Barafu. You know what is Barafu? Situe, I'm not sure. Okay, barafu, it's uh, ice. Like cold ice? Yes, ice. Okay. I C E E, barafu, ice. Then we have the uh, ruji for skin. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the so ruji and the, okay, let me see. So we have the ruji. Yes, the ruji for snow. So we have the Ruji for snow, all right. Then we also have this one for eyes. Okay, so we have that. So the Ruji, uh -huh. so we can say like the, the snow has melted, Ime, yeah. 
Yeyuka. Yeyuka. Okay, so Imeyuka. So it's the Ruji is still in the same class as uh, Barafu. So now, what if I want to say I'm melting the snow? Like I always tell people, for example, if we go out camping, maybe like the three of us, you find that uh, we can either use snow or we can use ice, although ice will give us a better result. But you can find like uh, some clean snow and you can melt the snow to make even tea or something, you know, because it's basically water, but, uh, you know, in a different form. Although I may use a lot of snow to like, uh, you know, bags and bags to make one liter. So now I can say like, I want to melt the snow. I'll say like, for example, I'm melting the snow now. I can say Nina I Yeyusha, you know, Nina Yeyusha Badr. So still I'm melting it. So like the way I would say for Barafu. So, yeah. So, to copa mojako. Yeah. Yeah, so you see now we have the infinix. So we can say Nina Yeyusha. But if there were many, Barafu, so like this, if there are many snows, let, let's assume that there were many snows, like you brought me like, um, although they may not have plural, but let's say you brought me like, um, you're like, dude, so you just do the melting. I don't do, I don't play with fire. I'll just get uh, bags of snow and I'll bring you. And uh, I, I'm saying that like I'm melting. So I'll say Nina uh, Z. Okay, now we have the easy. So this is the group called easy. So now I'll just say Nina Z. Okay, so Nina Z. Okay, Nina Z. Yeah, Yusha. Nina Z. Yeah, Nina Z. Yusha. Veruji. So like the Z will go because of this class. Although snow does not have up to that. So yeah. So. So because it's uncountable now, but this is just for teaching purposes. Yes. So snow does not have barafu and snow, they don't have a plural because they are uncountable. Yes. Or you can count. Maybe you can count your snow out there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Nina Yusha. So this one is just for teaching. Yeah. So Niri I Yusha and Niri Ninazi. Yeah, you shall. So we have the easy. So yeah, so they in the class N. Okay. I think we are. Yeah, I know it's a lot of stuff. So sometimes it get maybe it gets like um confusing sometimes. And uh, also we have the class uh, U. So this one is uh Uzi. We call it Uzi. So it has uh, like for example Ukuta Unyere. Ukumbi. So this is like uh, the, last part, the last part that we are looking at. And uh, yeah, I was telling them about Kumbi Kumbi. Kumbi Kumbi means like termites, you know, the ones like uh, which eat the wood or like in summer you have seen like um, trees which were, they fell uh, during the, like, um, the winter. Now when summer is out, we have termites that come and eat that wood, especially if it's soft wood, they just enjoy some trees and they eat it, you know? I don't know in Germany if it's the same thing. Out here in Kenya, it's almost the same thing. So the tamak just come and eat uh, pieces of woods, yeah? Like the trees. Yeah, so we call them kumbi kumbi. And what's orangi kumbi? Uh, is ukumbi, it like ukumbi itself, it's like uh, a that can all people like for example even if you go to like uh, the stadium you have the stadium so stadium is still ukumbi mm -hmm. okay. if you go to like uh, uh like the university or where you do you um whatever it's still ukumbi you know yeah just let's say any big space that can be used to even if it's hosting games or host many people for a different and uh, um, you know, agenda, maybe meeting or any place that, that can hold a lot of people, it's still called Ukumbi. Yes. So it's like a place where people are like termites, you know, termites hole. Yes. So, like, uh, yes, yes. So, like, for example, if you have like uh, the university or, like, for example, as earlier, 
in the uh, my university we have like uh, the main or it's called assembly or it's not very mm -hmm. big but it can all like um my university is big it's chunkas so we are like uh, over eighteen thousand students but you find that we have like an assembly or and the assembly or can all like uh, 2500 students so we call it assembly or so this assembly or we can call it ukumbi uh -huh. yes mm -hmm. so ukumbi wa like uh, like uh, so you can say ukumbi wa kuchezea kadanda which means like uh, somebody understand ah not a or it's a stadium so ukumbi wa mkutano so which meet, meaning a meeting or so like this mm -hmm. yes so you just check like a uh, combination so because we have uh, slightly compound words, which like uh, you find like uh, we just put something, you know, at uh, you know at uh, after the word. So for example, uh, if I say like uh, any word that describes, like for example, ukumbiwa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> so. So we can say ukumbi wa kuseme wa kuchezea kadanda. Ukumbi wa mpira wa vikabu. So which means like a basketball, like a indoor arena or stadium. Yeah. And somebody just understands that. Tuko sawa? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So that uh, we can look a little bit about. Pa, 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 pa. Yes, let me see, let me see. No. That is uh, a lot of stuff. So this one is just explaining like, um, uh, kusu, ku, 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 ku. but I go to pakumu, okay? So pakumu. So what do you know about this one? Uh, it's for places. Mahalo. Yes. So what if I want to say, I'm going to that place? How would you say, I'm going to that place? Nina pa enda? Yes. So nin, that you forgot one thing. So nita, uh, maybe nina pa. Yes, nina pa enda. So nina pa enda. So, so when you say like uh, you're going to a place, so you can say so which means like uh, specifically you are going to a certain place. So for a pa. So if you are using pa as a like uh, an infix, and uh, also you may see like when we say. Also, this kind of uh, thing. So this is an adjective describing like uh, how good the place is. So you can see, in Apaenda Pazuri. So Pazuri means like uh, Zuri. You know what is Zuri? Good. Oh, well. Okay. You, what did you say? Zuri is good or well ah uh, yes okay so yes also you can see this one so this is also another instance can you read it for me uh, so i like it i like this place yes, yes. right you are maybe talking about like um a certain place and you're like Nime papenda. maybe Let's say, me propenda rabda. See, maybe. So, me propenda Cape Town. See you. So, me propenda. So, like uh, but uh, you don't need to put this one is not very difficult for the mm -hmm. power. Senior. 
Okay. So this one is not very difficult. Then we can, do you have any question up to there? Only in, because, only in context, what's the difference between Nime Papenda and Nime Kupenda? Like both are for place, Pa and Ku, but which one of those is, what's the difference between Pa and Ku? So, okay. So, yes, I'm getting there. So when you say that, for example, Nime, Ku, Penda, like in terms of a place, not like uh, the Ku for having somebody, they may get confusing mm -hmm. here, but um, keep, keep in mind that we are not talking about you now as a person we are talking about a place so sometimes the context before that may also be important to explain everything but now we are let's say we are talking about a place right so when i say that nime papenda okay we are still i'm still like uh in the same place so i'm still in cape town upper you know when we are talking about upper yeah like here yeah, i'm still in cape town then somebody asks you, Unonaji Cape Town, then Unonaji Sema, Nime Papenda, Cape Town. So you are still in that place, Nime Papenda. You are still stepping in that place, upper. Yes. So, uh, but when you use the ku, it means the place is a little bit far over there. You know, like let's say you get to move out of Cape Town and you go to, I don't know, maybe Durban or you go to Johannesburg. Then you can say, Nime Kupenda Cape Town, over there, somewhere far, Kidogo. Yes, over there. You are not no longer there. So, because <laughs> Okay. Yes. You're like, for example, I come to Germany, right? So, mm -hmm. let's say I run in Berlin and you ask me, do you like Berlin? Then I'm like, um, yeah, Nime Kupenda Berlin. Then I move out of Berlin, I go to Frankfurt. Right? Then you ask me, how do you like Berlin? Then I'll tell you, Nime Kupenda, Berlin. Because how I feel. Okay. So when yes. the person is speaking, uh, speaking about a place far away, then you use Ku. And when you are in the place about which you are speaking, you use Pa. Yes, yes. Because like you have to think about it like uh, when you say Apa na Uko. You remember mm -hmm. that one? Upper, because yeah. upper, it's always like ear. Upper, kuja upper. Yes, ear. So where you are. And when you say uko, it's always over there or there, you know, uko. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know that one in Kenya? There's no mm -hmm. comeback of that. You know, in Kenya, like, for example, if you feel bad, like uh, somebody like uh, they yeah. annoy you, they annoy you, and you want to bring your, you know, your feelings, and somebody is not ready, they will just tell you, like um, Nenda, yeah. yes, Nenda, Kaskie, Kaskie. So this is like um, you know, Kaskie, Vibaya, Vibaya, Uko, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Nenda Kaskia Vibaya Uko. <laughs> so, Uko, Uko. Nenda Kaskia Vibaya Uko. So, it's like basically telling somebody, go and feel bad over there, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, did yeah. I ask your feelings? I'm sorry. But go and feel bad over there, you know? Yes, go and check your feelings over there. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, Kenyans being savage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so so any question thing up to there? Uh, no. oh. Yes, yeah, so then also we have uh, so most of the time it does not have a prefix in this. Mm does not have a, um an like um an infinix most of the time. Yeah, so mm, 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 we just leave it the way it is. I, I know that I wrote it, but mm, most of the time it has its instances, but uh, yeah, it, uh, you just use APA at the, when we are talking about the infixes, we have the PA and we have the KU, 
but uh, most of the time we don't have the moon. So the moon is not, a, although it may be there, but I'm not, I'm trying to think about an instance where I would use moon, except when I'm saying umo, umo, like umo. No, I don't have a, a, any instance. So I know that uh, it can be used to like, uh, when you are referring to inside there and you say umo, like uh, umo. Yes, I know, umo means smoke in other language, but yes, if you speak yeah. other language, but umo, umo means uh, inside there. Mm -hmm. Umo means smoke in Spanish, um, but uh, when you say like um, umo chumbani, so inside the chumba. Umo. Yes, chumbani, so which means inside, inside the room, okay? Inside the room, yes, umo chumbani. So I don't have an instance where I would use that. So do we have any question? You know, sorry, Dr. I can say, uh... Umo barini. Mm -hmm. In the ocean. Well, yes. So you can say umo barini kuna papa. Do you know where's a papa? Tena. Tina? Uh, papa shark. Mm -hmm. a shark. So there's a shark I'm just I'm just uh, you know, yes, I'm just uh, messing with you. <laughs> So if it's a whale, it's a, how do you call a whale? Jen, do you know how you call a whale? What? Whale. Nyangumi. Mm -hmm. So, huh. <laughs> so saying about Nyangumi, so I was talking with one of my friends in Tanzania. So um, we are trying to do like a certain business deal. And uh, I asked him about uh, one of my, you know, one, let's say one of the ladies that uh, we were trying to guide. And my friend told me, <laughs> <laughs> Yes. You know, like the context meaning like, uh, don't worry about them. That is our way. You know, meaning like they have a lot of money. They are all dead. Yes. So we are in young women, so aware. Mm -hmm. Shark means like a predator. So if somebody says, we only papa mwache to kabisa, means like you are a predator. So yes. So like, for example, ron shark. That's why we call them ron shark. Yes. Yes. Mtu akikuita papa, avoid that person. If somebody calls you nyangumi, it means you are like heavyweight. In some of money or whatever they are trying to talk about. Yes, so and uh, that marks the end of uh, the object infinixes. Do you have any question on those? Mm -hmm. okay. so, so Tina Utangaria, the class, um, this is class 15. So look at class 14, class 13, a little bit about class 12. Actually, from class 10, you can look about the classification of nouns and the rest of the things. So you can just look at them and uh, yeah, you'll be fine. So, uh, so yeah, so they explain more about uh, this. Mm -hmm. So let me see, I want to go to the stories. So yeah. So Tina, did you see the link that I sent in the group? Uh, which one of those many? <laughs> Uh, the story, the story, story, and Lily. Yes, I, I think I saw a link about the story. Okay, let me just open the story, then I'll get, get everybody the link. Mm, my drive, why is it loading? 
I know that I have 101 links, so sometimes the storage may take a while. But, yeah. mm -hmm. So, but uh, this is a story of um, Tembo. What is the other name of uh, Tembo? An elephant? Yes. And uh, what is also the other meaning of Tembo? Mm. Let me see, Joey. I just know Tombo for stomach, but that's not Tembo, so. Mm. Jed, do you know the other meaning of uh, Tembo, except the elephant? The other name. Hmm? You so then the other name or the other meaning? Other meaning. Okay. Can you check the chat? Sorry, sorry, not Ukitia, Uritia. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uritia. The other two. Let me just write it once again. Oh my God. My writing is very bad. Gamma, PCP, what? PCP, what? Tembo, Uritia, my. Uritia. So, Tembo. So, Tembo. Uritia, my view. Okay, there we go. Yes. Uritia, yes. Uh -huh. So, can you read for me that one? Mugema. Jed, you stopped in the mid row. Yeah, the screen is moving. Ah. Mm. But but it's in the chat. I thought the chat should not it should not like uh, disturb okay, I'll, I'll anything because it's in the chat. Okay, yeah, I'll I know that I opened whatever, but it should be in the chat so you should be able to see it anyways. Okay, Mugema Kisifiwa Tembo Uritia Maji. What does that even mean? <laughs> just you know, what, what does that even mean? Understands elephant and water. And I think no, that's in Kenya. Okay, Tembo is elephant and Maji is water. <laughs> mm -hmm. So okay, so let's say like um, which one do we know? So do you know the meaning, Jed? Do you know the meaning of Sifa? Jed? Sifa. Sifa, Sifa, Sifa. S I F A. Praise. Yeah. Yes, yes, praise. So this is a conjugation of um, Akisifiwa. It's praise. So, which means when you pay somebody, right? Then mm -hmm. we know the word Maji. Everybody knows what is Maji, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning of tear? In Swahili, though. <laughs> not to be not to Spanish in Portuguese. I know, you, you want to speak Spanish. I know tear in Spanish means anti, but yes. <laughs> but in Swahili. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so tear. So tear means like, in Swahili means like uh, it's a mm -hmm. synonym of work or put something, okay? Oh, not okay. Put. Yes. So when, when we if, put the... If it comes come together with a the, with the sifa, then it's mm -hmm. give praise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, Mgema is a person. Who is a Mgema? So Mgema... Yes, um, mgema. What is a mgema? Mgema is a means like um, brewer. You know, somebody who brews like alcohol. So, 
we have um out here in in kenya so even i know even in like um out there most of the african country we have people who make like a traditional you know alcohol maybe out of bananas other people make out of um you know palm other make out of different things so out here in the coast that we make the the uh, the beer or whatever they make, like the alcohol, uh, especially when we have celebrations and everything, they make it uh, out of like um, the coconuts. Okay. If you go to like a country like Rwanda or Uganda or TC, they may use bananas. So, yeah, and some other places they use honey. Okay. So, but the main thing is uh, Mgema is the person who brews the beer. So when we say mgema akisifiwa, okay, so it means when the brewer is given the praise, okay, tembo. So in that analogy, what does tembo mean? Elephant. No, in the analogy that I'm trying to explain, I said mgema is a fewer. Oh my God, you're not following. What uh, is it like uh, a pot? No, okay. So, okay. Um, Tembo means like a traditional beer or alcohol. Because I say that like Mgema is a brewer, somebody who is making a traditional beer, uh, depending with the region. So, I don't know in the southern part what they use, but here in Kenya, I would say they use, like, for example, in my region, they use coconuts. And some other places they may use like uh, palm oil or palm, I don't know. Then in like central Kenya, they may use honey. If you go to Western Kenya plus Uganda, they may use like um, bananas. So like ripe bananas, and then they are fermented. Then if you go to some other areas, they may use millet and sorghum. So like this. Yes, mutama na wimbi, millet and sorghum. So you find that now the person who makes the beer they are called mgema. So, like, for example, I don't know if Tina, you are a very like stout Christian, but for example, in the Bible, when like um, Ghana, kind of Galilee, when Jesus performed the miracle, you hear like even the end of the celebration, he was like, "Oh my God, you saved the best wine, you know, after Jesus did whatever did." So you save the best wine, you know, for us, you know. So like they even the the person of the, the end of the ceremony was given that uh, wine, was saying that I thought uh, the best wine already finished. When the people get drunk, you start putting more water in the beer because that is something that happens, in, especially in the traditional beer. So that's why we say like so it means that when you give praise to somebody who is doing something very good they mm -hmm. stop doing that thing and they just become worse because they are just receiving the praise but uh, they feel like they have already gotten to the place you know like they start work they stop working hard and uh, yeah so that's why mm -hmm. yeah. yes yes it's a mm -hmm. it's a problem okay that's why you probably <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So can Jed, can you read for me this title? The title. Mm -hmm. Tembo Napanya Kujifunza Kuto Kunu. Yes, Tembo Napanya Kujifunza Kuto Okumu. What does even mean? We already know the word funza. Yeah, kuto ukumu siju. Ukumu means like a to kisema siku ya kiyama mungu atatu mungu na maraika wake watatupa ukumu judgment. Ukumu means judgment. Judgment. Okay. Yeah. So when we say kuto, it means like when you don't do something, you know. So kujifunza. So funza means like tembo na panya. So kujifunza kuto ukumu. Like learning not to judge people. Yes. Or to judge. Yes, to judge. Actually, learning not to judge. Yes. 
kujifunza kutoa hukumu Tuko sawa ndi hapo Tina we together ndio aha so Tina you read for us uh, pam 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 the first paragraph ndio then read us for the second one I'll read the uh, the third one and we just go right about it's not a very big story though so yes I'll just start mm -hmm. Kulikuwa na tembo mkubwa mwenye jina tembo Tembo alikuwa na moyo mkubwa sana na mwili mkubwa kuliko wanyama wote wa porini Kila siku tembo Aliji aliji vunia kukupa wake na alifikiri kwamba yeye ndiye aliye bora zaidi kuliko wanyama wengine alikuwa na marafiki wengi porini lakini hakutambua kuwa marafiki hawa waliogopa kuzungumza naye kwa sababu ya Vamira yaka kubwa. Yes. Okay, so I'm not sure come on and schedule. So I'll read Moja uh, Moja Marafiki Watembo. Alikuwa panya mdogo mwenye jina panya. Panya alikuwa mnyama mdogo mwenye moyo moyo wa dhahabu. Alifurahi kuwa na uh, alifurahi kuwa na marafiki wengi na alikuwa na tabazamu kwa kila mnyama aliyekutana naye. Hata hivyo, panya alijisikia vibaya sana kila wakati tembo alipomtazami alipomtazama kwa dehaka na kumfanya ajihisi duni. Yes. So you can continue here. Kama unaweza wani. Okay. Siku moja panya aliamka akiwa na asira kubwa moyoni. Aliamua kuchukua hatua na kuonyesha tembo kwamba hakuwa duni na alikuwa na uwezo wake mwenyewe. Panya alipanga njama na kuanya, na kuanza kutekeleza mpango wake. Alipofika karibu na tembo aliingia ndani ya sikio la tembo bila kusema neno. Tembo haku, hakuhisi chochote kwa sababu sikio lake lilikuwa kubwa mno panya aliendelea kuingia ndani ya sikio la tembo mpaka alipofikia kwenye mapafu ya tembo kisha alianza kutoa mchanga mwingi ndani ndani ya sikio la tembo Tembo alihisi kutoa kikohozi kikubwa na kuanza kupiga teke huku na kule lakini hakujua kulichotokea muda mfupi baadaye kidogo tu pina ataendelea okay muda mfupi baadaye tembo alipoteza fahamu na Akangu, akanguka chini Parafiki zake wote purini walipika kelele na kujaribu kum what kumwokoa walikundua kuwa panya alikuwa ndani ya sikio la tembo na alikuwa amemfanya apoteza fahamu walimtoa panya nje na tembo akapata fahamu alinuka na kusema na kushukuru sana kwa kunisaidia panya sasa najua kuwa ukupwa wa mwili 
Haimanishi Kue Die Mueni en Gubu Saidi. Ok, en persona. Paña Akata. Paña Akatabasamu na Kusema. Ni me furai Kua ni de Kusaidi a Tembo. Lakini jambo ramu, jambo muhimu zaidi ni kujifunza kuwa tunapaswa kuheshimu kila mmoja bila kujali ukubwa au ukubwa wa mwili wao sote tuna uwezo wa kufanya mambo mazuri Tembo alisikiliza maneno ya panya na akajifunza aka somo kubwa sana hiyo siku aliomba msamaa wapanya na kuanza kufikiria wengine kwa heshima na upendo. Marafiki wote wa Tembo walifurahi kuona mabadiliko haya na wakarudi kuwa marafiki zake. Jen? Kuanzia siku hiyo <coughs> Tembo alikuwa rafiki bora kwa kila mnyama porini. Aliwaheshimu wengine na kujifunza kusikiliza maoni yao alikuwa na furaha zaidi na marafiki wengi wa kweli panya na tembo wakawa marafiki bora sana waliongea na kucheka pamoja na kufanya mambo mengi ya furaha tembo alijifunza kuto kuto hukumu watu kwa kulinganisha ukubwa wa uwezo wao wa mwili na kubadala yake na kubadala yake aliwaheshimu kwa sababu ya damira na moyo wao mwisho wa diti hii tunajifunza kwamba ni muhimu kutohukumu watu kwa kuangalia tunje yao Watu wote wana uwezo wa kufanya mambo mazuri na tunapaswa kuheshimu na kuatamini na kuatamini kwa damira na moyo wao kama tembo na panya tunaweza kujifunza kutoka kwa wengine na kuboresha maisha yetu na uhusiano wetu na wengine. Hai, right, safi kabisa. Asante. So, anyways, ini and ibingine nzuri kabisa. This is a very good story. So, kwa sasa, sipiti manene yote magumu. So, ilo ni jukumu kwenyo. So, nende ni tafute ni misamiati. Go and look for vocabularies. So, okay, I know there's a lot of vocabularies in this story. Araf wiki jayo as we are finishing like our crash course next week. So we go on like a recap of different things that um, you need explanation. So then also we look at the vocabularies of the story. Then we will be done with our 16 weeks crash course. Yes. So kwa sasa mtauliza kuna swali lingine. Na siku da da hii ya nidi. Amwe hadi hii. U, uli ituma a uh, uh, group yes yes iko kwenye group nitaituma tena iko kwenye group zote kwenye hilo group la TGV na pia kwenye la Swahili conversation yote iko kwenye hayo makundi yote mawili yes mm -hmm. lakini nitaituma tena so kidogo tu nitaweka tu kwenye TGV alafu nikutag tena Diyoweza kuipata. There we go. Diyo. So, nisha atuma na nimekutagi. Utaipata tu. Yes. So, diyo hapo. So, so, sijui kuna swali lorote lingine. Do we have any question? Okay. So, kuma kuna swali lingine. So, I'll say, asante ni sana kwa kuja so tutaweza kumalizia darasa letu hapa so yes so i'm just coming to the end of the class so asanteni sana na tumai mweza kujifundisha kitu na tutapatana maybe jumanne kama si jumanne tutapatana ramisi yes mm -hmm. so.
Asante sana moyo. Na na wakati mwema. Pia naye anatakiwa wakati mwema. Sina una jambo la kuongeza. Do you have anything else to add on? Uh so just really Sasa. Okay. Okay. Asante sana mwalimu. All right. Nashukuru kabisa pia nyote kwa kuja na nitawatakia kila raheri na wakati mwema. Nikuwa darasa mzuri. Asante sana mwalimu. Karibuni. Sasa.